who are supporting the Syrian revolution through social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, and without whom none of our actions have been possible. So the Syrian uprising has been letting appear since the beginning of the revolution, and obviously during the summer, a huge factor within European circles of intellectuals, French and Belgium, to name but a few. Indeed, two camps were shaped, the anti-imperialist intellectuals, followed by teacher, researchers, all pro-Bashar al-Assad, and the Syrian diaspora, supported by their friends, and a few well-known intellectuals, all anti-Bashar al-Assad. So I'm going to see the open fracture within these anti-imperialist intellectuals and the Syrian diaspora and their friends. So to illustrate this fracture, I would like to show you a picture of French intellectuals. They are political dissidents named as anti-imperialists and who claim to support Bashar al-Assad. So as you see, you can see the picture of Bashar al-Assad and Hafez al-Assad, his father. While they are having a strong link with the right-wing extremist party, the Front National of Marine Le Pen in France, and their position on the social networks must be taken into account as they are linked directly or indirectly with all the extremist activists who are collecting and posting their news both in their Facebook page and their blogs. So I will show you the network of extremist activists is huge in France. Can you make imagine, it bigger? Make it full screen. Uh, here, yes, of course. So imagine all these people having a Facebook page. On the left. Is that all right? The left, yeah. It's okay? The show her, show her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just here. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. So all these activists, extremist activists, okay, they are playing a role, a huge role on, the, this, on social networks, which means that when these anti-imperialist intellectuals collect and convey information, okay, they take it, they post it, okay. As they just follow them. The picture could be the evidence. So the picture I showed you uh, before at the beginning. Okay, so I just make escape. Right. So this picture uh, is the evidence. Okay, that the fracture is based on similar ideologies. Nevertheless, it is surely based on ignorance. So why I say ignorance? I say similar ideology first, when I noticed that they report official sources of the regime in order to neglect the deviant sources. So the deviant sources are people, okay, Syrian, who are leaving the revolution. Actually, they have covered the Syrian revolution, they call themselves a conspiracy against Bashar al-Assad. They were embedded as they were received by the, the Minister of the Communication of the regime. Hence, they created their news on subjectivity and missed to give the voice to the real actors of the revolution. Moreover, they gave a confessional aspect of the Syrian revolution, trying to divide people in France and in Europe. On top of that, they distorted the reality and misrepresented, and misrepresented the Syrian opinions. As soon as Bashar al-Assad has justified his massacres by the threat of jihadists, for instance, it was easy for them to adapt, Bashar al-Assad says, to their vision of what they call a conflict between Bashar al-Assad and all imperialist forces, hidden, helping rebels with arms and logistics. It is false, of course. I say as well, ignorance because they don't speak Arabic, they don't read Arabic, and they are miles far away from the understanding of the Arabic culture. So do I, I must confess. But the work 
of researching the truth was extremely interesting because it opens you a different perspective of visions and leaves the choice to distinguish between real news and lies. And I am quite sure that everybody here has experienced it on their Facebook pages or on their Twitter. I must add that social networks they use make them live and be recognized among the brotherhoods of conspiracies. Unfortunately, they are recognized as well amongst journalists, mainstream journalists, who invite the most popular and the most loved by the audience. So consequently, the social networks have become the battlefield between arguments under the shape of generated content in Facebook. And they made these intellectuals leave and report lies. And the audience are following them without comparing between true and false facts, without checking the biased sources. And we can uh, cite Info Syrie. So I'm going to show you uh, a blog, Info Syrie, of disinformation, a uh, propaganda pro Bashar al Assad. And uh, it's French. Voilà. Info Syrie, so they have this Twitter, okay? And you can see here Hugo Chavez, Syria legitimacy is Bashar. <laughs> so they are pro Bashar al Assad, okay? Uh, run by a uh, French who is linked with extremists in France, okay? So they make the propaganda for Bashar al-Assad in France. So this website is run by Frédéric Chatillon, who is disseminating uncovered information. I said uncovered information, means let contextualize the environment of investigation uh, they used to practice. It reminds me of famous uh, journalist, uh, Philip Gibbs, who covered himself the war, the war in the Balkans. And I, I, I sit, I quote, mostly playing billiard in the Hotel Bulgari in Sofia, much as later, correspondents would cover US war in Iraq and Kuwait from the comfort of luxury hotels in Qatar and Saudi Arabia. So it, it's from Philips Gibbs, the patient of years. Although they didn't benefit from a luxury environment, they practiced, the, as I said, the hotel room investigation. That is to say, no investigation in the field, they just stay in a room, in a hotel, okay, and what they see on the windows, they report it. And for them, it's the perfect fact to report and to write. This is how they see the reality of a revolution in Syria, from a hotel, from a room, just behind their windows. But it's necessary to understand that what they collect when they see, even if they are in their room, they write it, they post it, and it is followed on Facebook because they are famous and because they are intellectuals and they are well respected. This is the problem. So we have this personage. So we have a mixed, okay, because he accounts. I can't join him, he's a Mr. Mr. Colon. He's not linked with extremists, okay? But in the Syrian uh, blogs or Facebooks, okay, we show them, because we have always the American here, we show them just to let people know that they are making a propaganda um, pro Bashar al Assad. And they are very, very, very dangerous. Because, sorry. Sorry, um, can you tell us who these are, Lilia? Of course. I don't remember the, the name of the American, maybe you know him, uh, uh, Steve or something like that, I, I can't remember him, it is Thierry Messon, Thierry Messon who covered Libya as well, from a hotel, <laughs> Alain Soral, which is very, very dangerous in France, Michel Colomb, it's not dangerous, because I, I agree with his uh, political analysis, on, you know, uh, Zionist uh, uh, politics, you know, in Israel, okay? I agree with what he's saying, okay, when, because he's pro-Palestinian, but with, Russia, with Syrian, he's not. So, because of this sort of in intellectual, they are divided, pro-Palestinian activists from Syrian people. 
And we have Joe Donnet, he's a comic actor, which is linked with the Front National as well. Okay. And he's supporting as their friend, they support Bashar al-Assad. What means to support Bashar al-Assad in France? <coughs> means that they take the, the threat of jihadists, okay, and to uh, threaten people, and they say, oh, they have jihadists in Syria, and this is because of these jihadists that Bashar al-Assad is fighting. But they don't say that Bashar al-Assad is, is committing a genocide, is genociding his people, or is committing massacres. This is what is very dangerous. It is a, um, a war, an information <coughs> war, you know, inside social networks. So how to mobilize uh, people's support for the Syrian cause and publicize an anti-pro Bashar al-Assad propaganda, knowing that his electronic army is widely present in social networks and controls every event, every content generated uh, by the Syrian activists and intellectuals who support the revolution. So the electronic army of uh, the regime uh, practices the insults and the threats. So they are anonymous, you, you don't know if, the, if a woman is a man, etc. okay? And they insult you and they threaten you by MP, uh, by PM, sorry, <laughs> by PM. When you say something against, you know, Bashar al-Assad, when you try to justify it, to explain that um, massacres are committed there, so they act like this. This is a new, a new war, but information war, but inside the social network. So it was the time for Syrian abroad to be involved in anti-propaganda actions through videos they post to show exactly what is happening in their country. A significant amount of information were dissected, analyzed, and put in their context to make uh, the information coherent and real. Indeed, it was a hard work for them to fetch videos in Arabic to translate, but it was worthless to run such actions through social networks, challenging the arguments of intellectuals. Thanks to their work, researchers were able to write articles edited on mainstreams and being then, by the way, their voice. And I would like to introduce you a respectful man, that's him. He risked his life to support the Syrian revolution. His name is Pierre Piccinin. He's a professor of history and political science in Belgium. He uses Facebook and Twitter to convey his information from the field, from where he was. Exactly, Pierre Piccinin decided to defeat journalism institution in investigating in Syria without being protected by a newsroom agency or by his government. Above all, he defeated the disrespect of the anti-imperialist intellectuals <coughs> who, from their chairs, were dealing with Syrian revolution and their interests. He worked independently. And Pierre has an interesting experience in Syria and knows how to move inside the free Syrian army he had observed during his stay. I would like to report you when he was arrested by the Syrian regime and tortured. He makes me remember uh, Luke Harding, if you know him, the excellent British journalist who came last year at Leeds University and he gave me an amazing conference. So he makes me remember him because he went to Syria, he reported every movement he did from uh, his country to Syria, and it was as if we were living uh, the experience he shared with us at the same time. And he had the bad idea to post this picture. So he posted his picture on his Facebook page and on Twitter. He was in Syria, and he posted this picture. And what happened? So the electronic army of Bashar al-Assad had the opportunity to catch the picture, Okay? And to report it to the Mukhabarat, so the secret services of Syrian regime. And it was unconscious and risky, to be honest. And Pierre was imprisoned and tortured until he was liberated by the intervention of the Minister of, the, of Foreign Affairs in Belgium. And he made a film. And I hope we'll have the opportunity to invite him because he's going to come here at Leeds University. And we'll, 
make a screen of his film and he will you know speak with you about his experience so here again social networks have played a tremendous role uh, to a certain extent so it was in, in Syria in in Tal in yeah. May 2012 with the Syrian army yeah. Ah, merci. Je sais quoi là? Je sais pas. 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 Je sais during his stays, um, so he knows now the, the chief of the uh, Free Syrian Army, okay, who let him come and he protects him when he has to investigate on the field, okay, because he has the two experiences, one experience is with the, uh, the first, when he, when he went to Syria, he was protected by, you know, not protected, but he was led by the Minister of the Communication of Bashar al-Assad, but after his, he was tortured, okay, he was in the other camp, so uh, he observed them, and maybe we'll see the film, and we'll see who is the uh, Free Syrian Army. So what's in France? Let's talk about France. So thanks to social network, we have the proliferation uh, of associations in Europe, uh, so uh, present in social networks. So we have a coalition of association who takes place in Europe, in France and in Belgium. Okay. So I choose to show you uh, the most important Free Syria in Lyon, in Lyon. Okay. We have AAVS. AAVS. Okay. We have Syria. Horia, okay, so this is uh, Fadwa Suleiman, she's living in Paris, so they gave a conference with Fadwa Suleiman and uh, a journalist, an activist, a Syrian activist, uh, so she was uh, interviewed by you know, the French TV and uh, so she gave a conference uh, and the, the title of the conference was uh, Syria, the Silent Skills Conference. And why the silent skills? Because of what I have explained before, because of these intellectuals, okay, who, um, who controls the information and who conveys uh, propaganda. So the, the coalition of this uh, association, okay, is composed, sorry, I forgot Action Siri, it's in you, it's in Belgium, okay. So it's uh, the carry the carry out actions, okay, to make people aware of what is happening in Syria. So you can find a PhD student. It's, it's very interesting because, as I think you you are a PhD student uh, in Arabic or maybe in in MA, some of you, okay. So they, you know, like you, they 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 have decided, you know, to be involved, to be more involved. In uh, you know in carrying out a Syrian, um, actions for Syria because as they were uh, they uh, they had uh, research in Damascus so they know Syria they love Syria and they left Syria so they ha they have decided you know to do something you know against all this propaganda in France and in Europe which is huge you can't imagine how it is and it's very 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 hard to fight against it. But now, thanks God that we have a lot of association in the social networks, okay? And they are carrying out humanitarian actions, which means that they um, collect phones, uh, they make conference, okay, to, to let people know what is happening. Okay? They invite people, well-known people, artists, Syrian, more and more. And I hope that the situation will change but little by little, the problem in France is that lots of people are in conspiracy theories, and it's very difficult, you know, to uh, to 
how do you call change it? Change people's minds? Or? To change their mind, yes. It's like a sector to change their mind, yes. Okay, so I would like to conclude um, that social network have been playing a huge, huge role in the Syrian revolution through initiatives carried out by volunteers who love and respect the human being. And it's necessary to remind that the regime is killing people who want to be free. Nevertheless, we can't be silent and waste our time on social networks if the actions don't follow. So please, I accept my thanks to have come here to, uh, this evening at this talk and give generously for Syrians who are facing a first winter. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Bravo. Um, you said the anti-imperialist um, groups in France were promoting this false information. Are there any other groups that, um, is it just the anti-imperialists or are there other groups as well? They are intellectuals. As soon as they are intellectual, they control the information on, online. You have intellectuals, you know, that they, are, um, they appear on TV, okay, on mainstream. We are used, we know them. Public okay? intellectuals, but yeah. Public, yes. But now we have intellectuals online, which is, they kept all the audience, because as French, they don't want to see the TV, you know, they're fed up with the intellectual who speak, you know, on the mainstream, <coughs> so they kept their attention on online news, because they think that online news is competing with the mainstream, and that online news is better now than mainstream news, than, you know, uh, like uh, Le Monde, or TV like TF1, we have channels, you know, like here we have BBC, something like that. So if you are not interested in BBC, you go online and you go in websites, you know, uh, led by activists or intellectuals, anti-imperialist intellectuals, and, and you think that they are right. And, you know, they are creating the information, the news, as a way that people, you know, say, oh my God, he is right. <coughs> But if they forget, they forget that they don't speak Arabic, I don't know nothing from the culture, Arab culture. So how can they convey information, you know, uh, with ethics, without knowing Arabic language or the culture of, the, of Syria? They put the confessional aspect on the, you know, on the revolution, but it's not confessional at all. This is Bashar al-Assad who said it's confessional, but it's not, because Syrian people is united in one. It doesn't matter, you know, from where you are, the region you have. They are one, and they are linked, and they are just fighting for the, their freedom, that's all. And the anti imperialists they don't want to understand that, that they are fighting for their freedom. So that's why it's, it's very hard, okay, to, to um, how do you say that? It's very hard to say to people, look, they are wrong. Look, we have the evidence. We explain you everything on, on the conferences. Okay, we bring you Syrians from there, and, and we bring you a man who risked his life. And they're still continuing saying, no, you're wrong. They are right. This is the problem. Yeah, I mean, in, in addition to that, there is like this added element, which we also have in Britain, um, with the far left. Um, I'm thinking people like George Galloway in particular have stopped the war. Um, George Galloway is an anti-imperialist. Um, and he's leftist, and they see Bashar al-Assad and his like socialist Ba'athist government as the last bastion of socialism and secularism in the Middle East, and therefore something that needs to be protected by the left and not criticised. And so, I mean, anti-imperialists, I think they can be right-wing, like the Front National, or they can be very left-wing as well. And one of my friends, she runs Lead Syria Solidarity in Bradford, which is obviously where George Galloway has his constituency, and she says that it's absolutely impossible to get anybody to support the Syrian cause there because they believe what George Galloway says, they believe what Stop the War and other people with the same mentality, left-wing mentality, put online, and they see that, um, as uh, you were saying, uh, the Syrian revolution is a revolution by Salafists and jihadists mm -hmm. against the secular state. And so it's definitely something that's not only just in France, but also here in Britain, in Yorkshire, in Bradford, you know. Yeah, but if, if Pierre Pichin come, you will exactly understand what is going on, you know, inside the, the free army, uh, free Syrian army. 
because the, the jihadis are few. And let's talk about jihadis. Let's go. The jihadis, they, they say we have Jabhat al Nusra, we have uh, uh, all the Katiba, Katiba, Muslim Katiba, then we have Christian Katiba as well, and we have all Katiba, okay, that represents, you know, people, Syrian, okay. They're fighting all together, they are disorganized, but they try to, you know, to fight and to, to organize themselves as they can, okay. For Jabhat al Nusra, at the beginning, this, uh, some intellectuals and some researchers said, that it was Bashar al-Assad who, who um, permits Jabhat al-Nusra to, to be created, in fact. And after, he left the control on them. And in fact, Bashar, um, Jabhat al-Nusra, they are just people like you and me that are fighting against Bashar al-Assad, but without the same objective. This is what, this is the problem. But for Syria, it's not really a problem, okay, because this is up to Syrians to decide who they want and how do they want to live. It's not, you know, our problem, it's not our interest. And that we can say that the anti-imperialist intellectuals, they are thinking as if Syrian people doesn't, don't exist. And they speak at their place, you know, they, they, they speak as if they were Syrian, as if Syria belongs to them. This is the problem. So let the Syrian, you know, organize themselves and do, you know, let's help the Syrian because they need us. Uh, and we don't have, you know, to enter to this, uh, you know, difference and names as jihadists or, or something like that because the name of jihadists in France threaten, uh, threaten people. When the French uh, listen or hear or read jihadists, oh my God, this is Osama bin Laden. This is Bombay attack. This is and, what, and so and so and so. So, you know, it's a circle, a vicious circle. Yeah. But the UK and France have been the first two countries to recognise the Syrian opposition party as like the only, you know, um, like party representing like Syria. They've completely, they're not taking into account Bashar al-Assad anymore. So the governments aren't taking into account these intellectuals that are posting this really working stuff on Facebook and Twitter. They've made that decision to completely go against him. I see the, uh, she said uh, the opposition, the, the coalition, the opposition. The, the French government and the British government recognise the Syrian opposition as the only true government. So does it matter what the intellectuals say? Ah, okay. Yes, yes, surely, yeah. But, uh, just yeah, but, take yeah, I agree, I agree. They have recognised. Recognised is a huge word, okay, but the let Syrians died. So it's good to recognize, but it's a, a Syrian um, matter, okay? What they are going, what what is happening, you know, uh, in the opposition, okay? It's up to Syrian to say who will represent them. But the fact is that even if they recognize things, okay, a decision or organization or association, okay, they let the Syrian die. And this is people like you, like you and me, who are acting actually. This is why it's so important, you know, to be united and, and, and with Syrian people because they, need, they really, really, really need the us. And I have a friend who went to Turkey, <coughs> to Turkey frontiers, okay, and he, he's always shooting and was making the photos there. He's a reporter. And to be honest, every day when you see all the pictures, you say, oh my God, what's happening? It's very hell. It's a hell. So. You can't just say, you know, you can't just talk about politics, politics, politics. At a time, we let politics aside and we must act. This is what, sa what said a French um, doctor, because he, he uh, went to Syria. He's going to Syria again. And he says, stop talking about politics. Now we must act. We must create hospital, because they are targeted. We must, create, we must form uh, doctors, French doctors, and help the others. And uh, let me show you uh, one uh, Facebook page of the doctor in Syria because they are very, very organized and they, this is coordination of doctor in homes. And thanks to them, we know what is happening there. So the, sometimes the, the images are you, like, like this. Sometimes the images are very uh, hard to see, but you have you know, an idea of what is happening every day. Every day, every day in the hospital. So it's unbelievable. Thanks God we're here. <laughs>
that they are living, you know, something, you know, we can't imagine. I do agree with you. <laughs> it's politics which is stopping the, it's because, you know, China and Russia vetoed intervention. So maybe it doesn't, it doesn't need to be disregarded altogether because that's what's stopping, you know, like sort of full-blown like, intervention. Yep. Because these countries that like, have this, like, have this power, like, to, I know. to veto. I know. You know. I mean, I'm for intervention, obviously, like, it's awful what's mm. happening there, like, we should be going in like, straight away, but it's because of this, like, political community, which is stopping it. Yeah, yeah. Once again, you know, Syrian interests uh, are denied. And Syrian people, you know, they are denied. It's as if, you know, they are reflecting, as if pe uh, Syrian people don't exist. This is horrible. And also, one thing I'd like to say about that as well is that it's true that the, the British government and the French government have now recognised the Syrian opposition as the only legitimate representatives of the people. But... Um, Although they did that, it was exactly this um, acidy discourse of sectarian warfare and um, <coughs> Islamist armed groups that was the main uh, reason given in the Western media and the British media and the French media and the American media for not intervening in the first place. It's like we can't arm these crazy Taliban groups. And so although it might seem like a slightly marginal thing, um, it actually, like, th this propaganda has played an important role because the whole discourse of the civil war in Syria, i.e. sect against sect, yeah. was something that Assadi propagandists thought up in the first place and was never properly deconstructed, I think. Yeah, we must deconstruct this discourse because this discourse is a regime discourse. It's a discourse of Ash Bashar al-Assad. In fact, he covers, you know, he's hiding behind, you know, uh, sects or, you know, behind this confessional, you know, aspects which doesn't exist you know, in the field, but he's a protection for him, so he's safe. And when you say Talibans or jihadists, we think about uh, OTAN, okay? So NATO, the anti NATO sorry. <laughs> so the anti-imperialists say, oh, don't provide them arms, please. Oh, don't uh, do anything, don't intervene. Because look what happened to, uh, in Libya. So the NATO will come and will destroy, destroy everything. Okay, now, what, two years, okay? And NATO <laughs> don't intervene, okay? NATO is not the agenda of all the, politi all the politicians, okay? And, and he's still killing his people. Um, <clears throat> my question is about, like, uh, to what extent do you believe in the honesty and sincerity of Western media? Because I think it's possible to divide the media like Muslim and non-Muslim. So I would say the approach to the Syrian issue is determined, like in Turkey, for example, Erdogan and the pro-Erdogan's media, they support free Syrian army. And Turkey is one of these countries who, who recognize the, the need for a nation in Syria. And what determines the media's approach is whether you are Alevi or Sunni. So that is the only criteria in Turkey. Okay. Like, and then, and you know, uh, in and like the, I want to I want to question the honesty of the Western media because we have some Western partners and mm -hmm. friends while we fight against each other. You know, like this Alevi Sunni, and there is a Kurdish issue in Turkey. People killing each other. And you kill the Kurdish activists, and you find British guns and American guns and Israel ammunition. And then, you know, like, there are some Western people on the Kurdish side, and there are some Western people on the Turkish side. And Western media is, you read the Guardian, they say, oh, Turkish government is fighting against the terrorists. While you read the song, they say, oh, some Kurdish people are getting massacred. So I feel like sometimes we're the puppets of the Western world. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we have an domestic issues and killing each other, we have Western partners and activists. But when it's we are being killed in Gaza or in Bosnia and like in in, in Chechenistan, you know. So, like, I feel some kind of a, you know a paradoxical approach of the Western media. So, like the governments, like British government, yeah, <clears throat> they recognize the new Syrian formation, and the French does as well. But, you know, like, I think the new generation of the Muslims should be more wise up and should know the, the conflict of interest and no one cares actually how many people are getting killed in Syria. People on Facebook and getting their coffee and whatever. So, I think, like, 
what is the structure and system in really, and what determines what, who determines what, what is the solution for the Muslim world? You know, like I know we are lagging behind the world, like there are some, you know, like, we need to just regulate ourselves and keep a priest of the technology or whatever, you know, we have to regulate and stuff like that. So, I think this should be questioned as well the honesty of the Western media and the Western activists within the terms of the Western interest, like Russia and people, just because of the Russian reason, you know, like it's just because.